and now. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for a time of meditation. I invite each one of you to sit comfortably and find a comfortable position in your seats and close your eyes if you wish and take some deep breath and let go of any distractions or worries that might be on your mind. Take a moment to breathe in and feel that cool, cool shade. As you breathe in, feel yourself relaxing into this space. And breathe out, releasing and letting go. And as you take your next breath, imagine yourself drifting, drifting along a cool, Maybe a cool river bank. Imagine yourself drifting with the flow. And as you feel yourself moving with the waters, feel that you're being carried to a different place, a different place in consciousness, a different place in time. And imagine as you're drifting down this beautiful, cool body of water, that you find yourself stepping into a new shore, one that looks very similar to the one that you had originally left behind. Imagine that you are stepping into the future, your future self, and imagine that you have emerged exactly one year in the future, 
It is May 5th, 2025. And imagine that during the course of that journey, everything that you have hoped for and wished for and dreamed of for this year has happened. Imagine that everything went right. And here in this place of refreshment and joy and wonder and awe, you look back on this journey, the past 365 days, with gratitude and a full heart. And as you feel that gratitude and that love and that joy, bring to mind all the things that happened in your life here in this future space where everything went right. The people that you met, the things that you've accomplished and achieved, the places that you've been, the way you feel, the way you think, the way you talk about yourself, the friendships that you have, the conversations that you have with others, the difference that you've made in the lives of others. Allow yourself to remember all the things from this past year that went right. And feel them and know them, remember them, and the truth of the possibility that they are. And in this space, I invite you to take a deep breath in and we'll move into a time of silence so that you can simply sit in that future reality of possibility, that future reality, that future self, where everything you've wished for has come true. Allow yourself to feel it and know it as if it is done as we move into the silence. Take a deep breath in, a breath of gratitude and joy, a breath of ease, knowing, trust. And as you breathe out, feel the release, release of any stress, any anxiety, any feeling like anything is difficult or hard, allowing the journey to be easy. And as we breathe in, we feel ourselves moving into a space, a mist that brings us back into this present moment, grounded back in this day and time, 2024, feeling ourselves grounded in the moment and knowing that anything that we can imagine in consciousness is real. And so we celebrate the creation of a possibility and we celebrate the oneness that we experience with God that creative spirit, that love that moves through us, the wisdom that guides us, and the community that supports us along the way. And from this knowing, from this awareness, we give thanks and say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And I think this is Glenn, right? Glenn, do you have another song for us? Yes, thank you. I'd like to play a song for you as a, uh, an opener to, uh, to Mindy's talk that we're about to enjoy. Uh, it was written by my friend Cozy Sheridan, C-O-S-Y Sheridan, one of the finest songwriters of our time during the pandemic. Uh, she wrote it on the ukulele, which is an instrument that she learned during that time, mastered, 
And she wrote this incredibly beautiful and inspiring uh, song about possibilities, which I think is a good introduction to the talk. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's called, What If It Will Be Okay? And if you haven't heard of Cozy Sheridan, uh, I'm happy to introduce you to her. I'll be playing it on the guitar. <laughs> Thank you so much, Glenn. That I haven't heard that before. That was a beautiful song. I'll have to pick your brain on how I can find that. Um, it's so good to be with all of you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I am in New York. It's actually afternoon for me. Uh, I have spent the weekend at a, a conference. So this morning I got up early to drive home and I live in a very rural area in northern New York and I was coming from over by the Great Lakes and so as I was driving home this morning I was winding through all of these beautiful green rolling hills and woods and forsythia and daffodils and tulips and uh, spring is is hitting the mountains and it was absolutely beautiful uh, and it had me think of when I was first learning to drive back in Texas, because I learned to drive on the little windy back roads. Um, how many of you remember, you remember learning how to drive? Like nod your head, you remember learning that, like that experience? So when I ride the back roads, that's what I think of. My dad took me out and uh, he's very patient and a very good teacher. And he would, um, you know, give me the, the wheel and I would kind of poke along, you know, at 10 miles an hour. And, and I was, I was obsessed because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I was obsessed with keeping my tires between the lines. Cause I thought, you know, as long as I don't run into anybody, as long as my tires are right in the center of the lines, then I'm doing it right. And I was one of those kids that like, I, I want to do it right. You know, straight A's, I got to do it right. 
So I was trying to do driving right. And um, so of course I had to focus on where my tires were. And so I'm driving, I'm like, where are my tires? Where are the lines? Where are my tires? Where are my lines? And I don't know if you ever tried to drive thinking about your tires, but it can be a little overwhelming. But, you know, I was puttering along 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. So it worked. But the day came when I uh, was in driver's ed and I grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So when I took driver's ed, we were on the interstate between Dallas and Fort Worth. And I remember when it was my turn to drive, I was absolutely terrified. I remember my knuckles like white as I'm clenching the steering wheel and knowing that I'm on this ramp, I'm going to have to go faster and faster and faster. And in my head, I'm like, where are my tires? Where are the lines? Where are my tires? Where are the lines? And my instructor next to me is like, you got to go faster. You're going to get squished. You got to go faster. You got to go faster. And as I was going faster, I I was I would notice that my tires were not in the middle. And so I would adjust. But when you adjust at 50 miles an hour, it's very different than when you adjust at 10 miles an hour. And so I was kind of swerving over here and then overcorrecting over here and overcorrecting over here. And we were kind of zigzagging. And it was this really crazy drive down the interstate. And tell my instructor, I he somehow figured out what I was doing. I think um, there's a special place in heaven for driver's ed instructors. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. But he noticed what I was doing. And he gave me this little um, tip that changed everything. And what he said to me was, lift your vision. Look where you're going instead of where you are. Look where you're going. Lift your vision so you can see where you're going. And I remember when he said that, I thought, I can't look out there because who's going to make sure my tires stay between the lines? I have to focus on this. If I focus there, then this is going to all fall apart. Um, but clearly what I was doing was not working. So I clearly needed to do something different. So I took that deep breath and I lifted my vision and the most amazing thing happened. The road smoothed out. Somehow the ride, my tires somehow managed to stay between the lines and something else happened aside from everyone in the back seat taking a sigh of relief. The other thing that happened was uh, I could see where I was going. I could see the signs. I could make choices. I could change lanes. Suddenly I had some capacity to master the interstate, to master the journey and where I wanted to go. So I share that story because I think now more than ever, <laughs> sometimes it feels like we're driving down that interstate very, very, very fast. And those lions on the highway are, are flying at us so fast with challenges and there's climate and there's disease and there's poverty and there's politics and there's all these things flying at us in the news. And if all we do is try to stay, you know, try to say like, okay, how do I manage these lines? How do I, how do I stay in control of my life when all these things are flying around me? it can feel very overwhelming and it can feel kind of like we're zigzagging, just trying to stay centered. And so I, I bring this message, this idea, this possibility. What if we actually, in those moments of overwhelm, uh, take a breath and lift our vision and see where is it that we want to go? Where is it that we're heading? And by lifting our vision, what if that makes the now sort of take care of itself in a different way? What if we could be in the now in a in a grounded, peaceful, resourceful way because we have this sense of purpose of where we're going? So when I, 2008, I started writing this book. It's called What If It All Goes Right? And I wrote it with the intent of answering the question, how do you navigate the journey? You know, how do you get from where you are to where you want to be without it being a you know crazy ride down the interstate <laughs> how do you take the scenic route if you want to take the scenic route how do you enjoy the ride so to do my research of course i want to talk learn about creating reality so i went to the book of creation genesis i open it page one let's see what i can learn here so there page one verse one everything we need to know about how to create is there in that first couple sentences in the beginning in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. So I read that. And there in that first couple verses, I I had two epiphanies that really became the basis of <laughs> my inquiry into creation. And the first thing I realized was I had always thought of God as the light. And what I saw in this scripture is that even before there was light, there was God, that God is in the void and God is in the darkness and God is in the chaos. And that it's not that God is light, but God was that presence that was able to conceive of something as different as light. When all it is is darkness and chaos, God is that power that allows us to conceive of something completely different than what has ever been before. And that's kind of a miracle, don't you think? So uh, I, the first piece of this, Charles Fillmore talks about this when he talks about our 12 powers, our 12 um, faculties, uh, it's the power of the imagination. We have this spiritual gift that allows us to think a new thought. It allows us to take our mind to places that it has never been before, which I consider to be a, a pretty sacred thing. So I have a, a little game <laughs> and I, I know some of you have access to the chat because I see that you're chatting. If you have access to your chat, I'm going to invite you to play along there. Uh, if you don't, you can just play along with pen and paper. But if you play in the chat, then I get to see what your imagination cranks out. So this is this is a time to play a little bit. So I have here a black dot. See it? That's my black dot. And if anybody asks you what it is, you'd probably say it's a black dot. But my question for you this morning as we ramp up our imagination is, what else could it be? What else could it be? So allow your imagination to, uh, to run wild and post in the chat if you're able to. If you're not, just write a few things down just to get your imagination warmed up. An eclipse, we just we were in the path of totality here. So it is like been eclipse land over here. It's been very exciting. So what if this is not just a black circle? What if it's an eclipse? What else could it be? What else could it be? Can you see it? Eclipse of the sun. We've got that eclipse consciousness going strong, don't we? Could be an eclipse. What else could it be? A hole, yes. Could be a pothole. Could be a black hole. A hole. Look at you all. Like you're all like consciousness. Like you're of one mind. A bullseye. A target. Very good. Very good. Our planet at night. Oh, I love that. That's kind of lovely. That's a beautiful thought. An Oreo cookie. <laughs> that makes me hungry. An absence. A rock. There we go. Yeah, your imagination. The more you use it the more it generates ideas, possibilities. It's an eye. Maybe it's the pupil of an eye. Um, maybe it's a uh, like one of those little googly eyes. A ball, a black ball. Can bounce it. Or you know the ones that in the songs, you know, the ball that tells you what word to sing. <laughs> a hanging chad. Look at all these fabulous ideas. So your imagination is endless and boundless. It can go anywhere. And that's a wonderful thing except when it's not the dark side of the moon. I love it. So how do you access your imagination? This is, this is my power tool I want to share with you. And this is, if you're ever feeling like uh, you could use a little creativity, if you could use a little, uh, a little something to get out of a rut or to get unstuck, here's the, here's the tool. And it's these two little, two little words. What if the words, what if are the key, the portal. Yeah, see, there you go. It's a portal. What if is a portal into new possibilities? Because your imagination can look at this and you could say, okay, come on, Mindy, it's really just a black dot. Let's be realistic. It's a black circle. That's what it is. And we can look at lots of things and say, well, the reality is, you know, you could look at the your bank account you could look at the number on the scale you could look at your cholesterol levels and say well there's this reality and that's what's real but your imagination gives you the power to look at it and say well, what do i want to make that mean you know i can make that mean something great i can make that mean something horrible but my imagination is generating that 
So by using the question, what if, we're able to direct the divine power of our imagination. What happens with a lot of people is they use the question, what if, in a downward spiral, which is absolutely, it's actually the opposite of how we were intended to use it, I believe. Like sometimes we say, well, what if I can't? Or what if it all goes wrong? Or what if it's too late? Or what if someone could do it better? What if I'm not good enough? What if, what if it costs too much? What if I don't have time? All these what ifs that lead us into this little spiral that feels, you know, it feels stressful. It feels overwhelming. It feels like a, like a black hole. Um, so you could look at this and say, what if it's, what if it's a, the end of the world? Or you could look at this and say, what if it's a portal to possibility? And that's to me, the way our imagination is intended. That's the divine use of imagination is not to what if down into our worst case scenarios, but to what if up into hope and possibility. What if that thing that you want, that vision that you saw in that meditation, what if that's a done deal? What if that's not pie in the sky? What if you're on your way? What if all the resources you need to create that are right here at your fingertips? And what if it's just a matter of trusting the wisdom within you and following that guidance and all of those things you hope for and wish for and intend come to fruition? So to me, that is the divine use of imagination and it is unlimited. So the process that we use is called what if upping. Imagination is an amazing tool. Um, if you what if up on a regular basis, you will have all kinds of positive ideas, positive possibilities. And yet imagination by itself, maybe you know someone who has lots and lots of ideas and they're all happy and positive and good. But sometimes we kind of get into overwhelm because there's so many good positive ideas and we can't possibly do them all. And so sometimes ideas can be paralyzing because now what do I do? So we bring to this power of the imagination, the power of wisdom, or Charles Fillmore might say discernment in the 12 powers. And when you bring these two together, something really amazing happens. So wisdom is powerful because wisdom is right here and now. Wisdom is not endless and boundless like imagination. Wisdom is this moment. It's the way you feel. So when you tap into your wisdom, so your imagination lives here at the realm of thought, your wisdom is here at the heart. So as we tap into our wisdom, we're able to discern of these positive ideas that I'm generating, what's mine to do? What's mine to do right here, right now? Uh, I keep an idea bank for the ideas that are good ideas, but they're not mine to do right now, maybe later. So wisdom guides us. What's my action to take? So I have a little game. It's called In My Future. I love that I can see you all. So the way this game works is I'm going to say something. I'm going to say, in my future, I will. And then I'm going to say something. And if it sounds like it would be fun, like something you might want to do in your future, then you raise your hand. And if it does not sound interesting at all to you, like you have no interest in doing that thing, then don't raise your hand. <laughs> so that's how the game works. If it sounds like fun, raise your hand. Otherwise, just uh, just let it go. Okay, so you ready? In my future, I will uh, get an electric car. Anyone interested? That's in my future. In my future, I will go on vacation. Anyone? In my future, I will um, write a song. <laughs> Got some songwriters here. Good. In my future, I will start a business. Any entrepreneurs? A few. There's good. Okay. In my future, I will write a book. Any authors? Yes, maybe. Sounds like fun. In my future, I will take a class. Take a class. In my future, I will teach a class. Any teachers in the house? Yes. In my future, I will learn a new language. In my future, I will learn to cook. In my future, I will learn a new musical instrument. Any budding musicians? Uh, in my future, I will be a role model. Mm, role models? In my future, I will serve my community. How about that? In my future, I will be a mentor for a young person. Anybody? In my future, I will make a difference, make an impact. That's kind of universal. So the thing about wisdom that's really beautiful is that it's your own and nobody can tell you where your yes lives and where your no lives. That's for you to discern. 
So nobody had to give you the elbow and say, raise your hand, raise your hand, because you just know, you know, the things that light you up and you know, the things that maybe just don't interest you so much. So the way our process works, uh, and I lead a nonprofit, it's called the What If Up Club. We work in small groups to to help people create um, whatever reality they want to create using the power of imagination and the power of wisdom and the power of community. So we start with the idea of what we want. We what if up it. And then we trust that each person has the wisdom to know of all these wonderful ideas that we share together, what's yours to do. Um, so that is the beauty of wisdom. So what happens when you are generating positive ideas, when you are bringing those ideas into your wisdom to discern what is yours to do, when your ideas are positive and your wisdom says yes, and could you feel your yes? Could you feel what a yes felt like? That's when I raise my hand. That's what a yes feels like. That's what my wisdom saying yes feels like. When your wisdom says yes to a positive idea, what it feels like is enthusiasm. Or as Charles Fillmore would say with his 12 powers, the power of zeal. Uh, I like the word enthusiasm because the root word means entheos, means in God. That we, when we feel enthusiasm, we are in a divine flow. It lets us know that we are congruent and we are in alignment with who we are here to be. So I, I, I love that. Charles Fillmore, you know, he talks about the power of zeal. And I love his quote when he was in his 90s. He's, you know, I said, I barely sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm to do that which is mine to do. So what if we could take on um, those goals, those dreams, those visions, those intentions with that kind of enthusiasm that brings power to our creation. So I invite you to uh, try this out. So this is a tool you can use on your own. So anytime you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed and want to create a shift, you can identify what the thought is and what if up it. Usually when you're feeling overwhelmed, it's because you're what if your imagination is going down. So it's just a, a flip. If you can imagine that, you can imagine, if you can imagine down, you can imagine up. It's the same imagination. You just got to direct it in the right way, uh, direct it upward. Uh, so you can use this on your own anytime you're feeling stressed or anytime you have an idea and you want to take it to the next level. You know, you want to see like, well, what if I could make it easier? What if there was a way to uh, tap into more resources? What if I think bigger? So you can use this anytime you need to shift your energy or you want to amp up your energy. Uh, I love using it in groups because there is something that happens when two or more are gathered. There is an energy there that is greater than the sum of our parts. And so I have worked with many, many New Thought Unity churches uh, coming in and doing workshops and, and starting what if circles where uh, kind of like intention circles. If you've ever uh, been familiar with Lynn McTaggart's work, it's similar, similar to that in that we are coming together with a common purpose, uh, in this case, to support each other in whatever it is that you want to create in your life, whether it's a trip around the world or teaching a class or starting a business, or maybe it's knowing forgiveness, being able to let go, finding life balance, whatever that thing may be. So it's a powerful process. I'm going to invite you to take something that you want, maybe something that came up for you in the meditation, a desire, a dream, a challenge, and just, um, Make it, bring it present for you in this moment and close your eyes. Just pick one thing. If I were to ask you the question, what do you want? Think of how you would answer that question. What do you want? If you could have one wish granted today, what would it be? What do you want? Bring that to mind, presence that. And imagine what if that thing that you want is being drawn to you in this moment? What if the journey to that manifestation is joyful? What if it leads you on amazing adventures? What if it's part of your own spiritual growth and development? What if it connects you with people that are extraordinary, who fill your heart and bring you joy? What if you feel a sense of accomplishment? And what if that thing that you want in the creation of it, you bless an infinite number of lives? What if it is a joyful, happy, easy, and um, meaningful journey for you? Take a deep breath in and then breathe out, open your eyes.
how'd it feel? Does it feel good? It feels like empowering, like it's possible. It's the feeling that is our point of attraction. So we can use our thoughts to direct our feeling in a way where we get inspired to then take action. So in my book, What If It All Goes Right, we talk about then going into non-attachment and the power of love, uh, which are also wonderful things to think about. Uh, but I invite you as a uh, challenge for the week to whenever you notice yourself going down that dark spiral, to tap into the power of your imagination, to turn it around to what if up into new possibilities and notice what happens for you. I have seen miracle, no other word of the magic miracles, whatever you want to call that. When I lead this process, people come back to me. The next time I see them, they always say, Mindy, you are not going to believe what happened to me since the last time I saw you because the things that they want, it, it's last night I did a keynote presentation for a rotary conference, a civic organization. And I had someone tell me, I, I did the presentation he said he wanted to grow the membership of their club. He came to me an hour later and he said, Mindy, you're not going to believe what happened. I just got an email that we have a new young member exactly in the demographic that we want from out of the blue. <laughs> so so cheers to what comes to us from out of the blue. Uh, it happens all the time. So uh, focus on it. Believe in the possibility of it. I've seen people manifest trips around the world. I've seen people manifest relationships. I've seen, there's a what if up baby that somebody told me about. Um, and I've seen my favorite story. I'll share, I'll close with my favorite story. I had a woman named Holly. She was part of our online community. And we talk about non-attachment. She said, Mindy, I'm, I'm working on that non-attachment piece and it's not working. She said, my mother is in the hospital. She went in for a routine procedure and everything seemed to go wrong. And now she's in critical condition. We don't know if she's going to pull through. And I'm trying to what if up it and it's not working. And I said, well, what are, what are your ideas? What are you, what if upping? And she said, well, what if she's fine? What if uh, she gets out of here and it's quick? And what if she gets out of here? What if she gets out of here? Everything was, what if she's okay? What if she's okay? And so I said, well, let's so to lean into non-attachment. I said, well, what if no matter what happens? What if no matter what happens, this is a time where you're strengthening your relationship with your mom? What if no matter what happens, this is a precious time in your relationship? What if this forever changes your relationship? What if no matter what happens, you can be a source of strength for her when she needs you the most? And she wrote me back a few weeks later. She said that after we had that session, she was in there with her mom. Her mom was was shivering from the cold. She was wanting more medication, more painkillers. The doctors wouldn't give it to her because it wasn't time yet. And she was started to have sort of a panic attack. And this woman, her name was Holly. She said she she didn't she never had a very close touchy feely relationship with her mother. But in that moment, that thought crossed her mind: What if I could be a source of strength for my mother? And so she said she did something she would have never thought she would do. She took her mom by the hands, and she said, "Mom, breathe with me." And so they started breathing together. And they did that for about 30 minutes. She just breathed, was breathing with her mother. And then she said after about 30 minutes, she said she did something else she'd never done before, which was she, she guided her mother in a visualization, a meditation visualization of when she was well and when she would come home and how the family would celebrate and what a party it would be and how joyful it will be when you are better and when you come home and when you're well. And by the time she had finished that visualization, the doctor came in ready to give the pain medication. And her mom said, I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. And she had an immediate turnaround within like 24, 48 hours. She was ready to be released from the hospital. But before she was released, she pulled her daughter aside and she said, I don't know how you knew to do what you did, but I do think it saved my life. It felt like it was a pivotal moment. And to me, that is the power of an idea. That is the power of a new thought, thinking something that we've never thought before. So I invite you to move into this week filled with hope and possibility uh, that anything is possible. So let us affirm together, let there be light. Together, let there be light. And so it is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Glenn, over to you for music.